Amen. So praise the Lord. Uh, so tonight we're covering this topic, uh, eternity, and specifically God and man in eternity. And then even the topic of tonight is called our eternal destiny. So uh, I had help from Zion. He just did this, and I think I'll start this way, and then this will kind of help give us a little bit of a overview. You have a pen here. This will look great. So what we're touching on when we touch on this matter of our eternal destiny is really seen uh, here in both Genesis 2 and Revelation 21 and 22. And I think, like anything, when any book or anything that people read or think about, I feel like the, the, a person's final opinion about it always depends on the ending. So a lot of times, like, I, I might have liked something so much but if the ending was no good, then I don't like the thing, right? So I go, it wasn't, right? The conclusion was unsatisfactory. I just go, well, it's not that good. But praise the Lord in the word. You realize that the Bible also is in this way, is that there are certain things, certain elements at the very beginning and certain elements at the very end. And that really speaks to us and speaks to our eternal destiny. And when we touch this matter of eternal destiny, um, it's really interesting because we know, I, mean, I think many of us were familiar that God, when he made man, he formed him in a particular way. And that's he formed him out of the dust of the ground and he breathed in him the breath of life and that man became a living soul. So right there, right away, we, we're familiar. We see there's three parts of man, body, the spirit, and then the soul. So right away, you realize, God is triune, tripartite man. And then we come to the first item, which is, well, what does God intend for this man to do? Right? Actually, God has a desire, has a purpose. And this is man's destiny, is that he wants this man to express him. But you might say, well, how, does, well, how would man express God? Right? How would this dusty man express God? You might say, oh, he should be moral. right? Be good. Be obedient. That's you know, all these things, right? But actually, the first item is that what God wants man to do is eat. So the first word is tree. So we realize in the very beginning, what God did after he created man right away, right after that, when he creates the Garden of Eden, he created the tree of life. Or he is the tree of life, not even created. He is the tree of life. And the tree of life is in the middle of the garden. And he put man in front of this tree. To let man know, actually, your whole purpose, your whole destiny is just to eat. It's to eat God, eat the tree of life. That's one of the first items. And then from there, uh, in Genesis 2, right, this is uh, Genesis 2, verse 9. Then there's a progression, well, right away. Uh, from the tree, in Genesis, it's kind of mysterious because it doesn't seem to, it just seems like it's describing some kind of almost geographical structure, but it talks about river. So right away, there's this matter of the river. And this is Genesis 2.11. So out from this tree flows a river. And we'll see as we get to Revelation, this river is the river of water of life. But for right now, uh, there's just this matter of, it just says a river flows out from it. It's, it's very plain, actually. And then uh, next, in that river, there's particular items that are found in the river. And we'll call, these are called building elements, or you can say they're, in this case, they're gold, delium, and onyx stone. So these are the building elements that are found in this river. So right now, you, right around, you, start, you start seeing these are some items. And actually, you'll see them again in Revelation. And I, I was very touched by that. And then finally, the final thing with Genesis is that God then says, it is not good for man to be alone. And then we realize, again, he's touching his purpose. What he's really talking about is it's not good for God to be alone. So he wants a counterpart. He wants a bride or a wife. So that is the final item is, I think it said loving couple, but we'll just say in this case, I was really touched by this word actually, in particular bride. Uh, 
Wife is also quite good, but I was really touched by this word bride, actually. And this, this will come up in, it doesn't use the word bride in Genesis. It just says the man and the woman. But really, we realize this is a picture of a full, complete unit. And really, it's a picture of how God wants to become one with man. So right away, you just come to this, so bride. So then, now coming to the other side, now we come to Revelation 21 and 22. And I think this is quite interesting is that in Revelation, right away, um, you have this matter of this verse. And I, I was really impressed by it. I think you all have it. It's Revelation 21, 2. And it says, And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So right away in Revelation, you have the same item. So this is the wife. You have Revelation 2.21. You have this matter of the bride. 21.2. And it mentions adorned for her husband. Well, how is this? And again, it's, it's interesting because on the one hand, it's a city. On the other hand, um, it's a bride. It's a person. So how is this bride adorned? Well, the city itself has these elements, is there's gold. The city is gold. There are the gates, which are pearl, which relate to delium in this case. And we could spend a whole time here, but this is just kind of an overview or panorama. So there's not enough time to get into the relationship between the difference of delium and pearl. And then lastly, on the foundation adorned on it are precious stones. So you realize this element here. And then uh, some very sweet verses are in this city or in this, in this person. There is the river of water of life. Water of life. And that's Revelation 22.1. And then on this side and on that side of the river is the tree of life. So that's Revelation 22.2. So with this, uh, you see right away that um, these two parts of the Bible, both the beginning and the ending, they're a mirrored reflection of each other. And as even I was mentioning to someone earlier, uh, I was really touched that it's really a reflection is that on the one hand, it starts out with this matter of man in front of the tree of life, which means taking Christ as his life and his content, enjoying the river of water of life as the supply. And what that does, what that happens, what, what happens there is out of that, there comes gold, delium, and onyx, or precious material for God's building. There's actually, for God to have the bride, to have his match, to have his counterpart, with man, as just man, a man of dust, it's impossible. So actually, God himself needs to go through a process to become a man, become the life-giving spirit, and get into man. And when this happens, then when you enjoy this, then you are producing materials for God's building. And lastly, then this is all built corporately into one person, the bride of Christ uh, for the Lord's return. So I was, I was really touched. Like, and as you just see, that's the final picture in Revelation um, is this matter. You have the bride. She's adorned with elements of the triune God. And in her, intrinsically, I, 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 tell you, I think it's so interesting that the order's reversed is that intrinsically, in this city, in this person, there is the river of water of life and there's the tree of life growing. So actually, uh, so what does this all mean? So this is this on the one hand is just, uh, like this is a big picture. Um, in our experience, and even what we've been covering throughout the whole, whole kind of the whole subject matter of eternity, is that this is actually our eternal destiny and this is our day-to-day -day experience, is that actually when we enjoy the triune God, this is what is 
going on with, within us, is that we're enjoying him as the tree of life, we're enjoying him as the river of water of life, and we are being constituted with the preciousness of Christ. And then this then uh, comes forth as the bride of Christ, built out as the bride of Christ. So I, I, just, I feel like uh, for myself, This, this, when this matter was first really shown to me, where I first really saw this matter, it really changed everything for me, actually, this matter, is to realize that that is the whole book of the Bible, is that you can see it in this way, is that uh, man's destiny, or what we were made for, what we're destined for, is that we're going to be part of the corporate bride of Christ, the city of God, the new Jerusalem, and we'll be enjoying God in eternity forever. Like, it's, it's really, I, the, the picture itself is just, like, it's so, it's so, like, it's so marvelous. So I, I just, I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's the triune God. Amen. Right? And he wants to get into the tripartite man. And day by day, I feel like for us, the application comes day by day. As we say, oh Lord Jesus, right? As we call on the Lord, or as in the song, you exercise your spirit. What's really going on is you are eating the tree of life. You are drinking the river of water of life. And you're being transformed from just a person of dust into something precious. That's what happens with us. And then as we get together, then we realize we need to be built up. We get built with one another, right? This isn't so people can admire us as individually, spiritually perfected people, but then we get built up together to form, to form something for Christ, for God. So that I feel like that, that's such a picture. Like, praise the Lord for this matter of our eternal destiny. I, I think the reason why that's so touching is that uh, really no matter how you're, you know, I feel like, you know, your destiny is just going to be this. I, 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 and I think it's, it's uh, for believers, that's to us a big comfort is that, so just realize no matter how you're, if you've had a tough day, tough week, yeah. tough month, tough year, your destiny is you're going to enjoy the triune God. Amen. You're going to enjoy him for eternity. Amen. Actually, you can enjoy him right now. You don't even have, you have the foretaste and then the, the real full taste, the manifestation. We can't even imagine. But just like a little, a little foretaste when we were singing tonight, so much more so, we will enjoy the triune God. So I, I feel like that is kind of like the takeaway from this, is to realize, never let the enemy cheat you right. and say, claim your destiny is anything else, right? You're no good. You're the, your destiny, you'll become part of the bride of Christ. You'll become part of the wife of the lamb. You'll be a part of the new Jerusalem. That's the destiny of all believers Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.